Greetings trailblazers, I'm Lunki and I'm from a country called Finland. Now, why does that matter? Well, it's because Honkai Star Rail has a few Finnish characters and references to Finnish mythology. So of course, I had to look into it and I discovered some interesting things about them that you might not know yet. So let's start with the most obvious one, Sampokoski, or as other people call him, Baby Girl. Sampokoski has a Finnish name and as a character, he is cunning, charismatic and a wanted criminal who doesn't know how to pronounce his own name correctly. The name's Sampokoski. 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 Well, to be honest, none of the Finnish characters do. His hair also matches the colors of the Finnish flag, which is a bit too on the nose. But then again, he's the one being called baby girl, so maybe I'm the one who's wrong. I don't know. The name Sampo originates from an old Finnish epic called Kalevala written by a Finnish polymath Elias Lönnrot in 1849. In Kalevala, Sampo is described to be a miraculous artifact that is able to produce infinite wealth, grains and salt. Seemingly out of nowhere, a priceless treasure that could enrich any person or land. Here's a simple summary of Sampo's appearance in Kalevala. So there's this dude called Ilmarinen, who's a very skilled craftsman from a place called Kalevala. He was given a task by the witch queen Lohi, who's from Pohjola, to craft a Sampo in exchange for her daughter's hand in marriage. Ilmarinen took the deal, locked in, and after countless failures of trying to craft the Sampo, he got it just right. But unfortunately for him, when he presented the Sampo to Lohi, she went nah -uh, and denied their marriage while demanding Ilmarinen to do even more tasks for her. She still took the Sampo though, and locked it away so that only she and her people from Pohyola could benefit from it. Eventually, Ilmarinen did get the wife, but she died after being hit with the curse of Kullervo. Kullervo was a slave that worked for Ilmarinen, and the wife of Ilmarinen decided to disrespect Bro for no reason by baking a stone into his bread. She got what she deserved, it is what it is. After Ilmarinen lost his wife, he went back to Pohyola to get another one. But he was in for a rude awakening. Ilmarinen saw that the people of Pohyola were living happy and prosperous lives, all thanks to the Sampo that he made. And he felt like he got finessed by Lohi. Ilmarinen was pressed, so he gathered his Kalevala squad to steal the Sampo back. However, the boys weren't that slick, and a big fight between Kalevala and Pohyola broke out. And amidst the struggle, the Sampo was broken. So all in all, this story has themes of deception, theft and violence. Pretty fitting for a character like Sampo Koski, don't you think? In Finnish mythology, there are actually various interpretations and depictions on what the Sampo is, depending on which tale you talk about. But the reason why I chose specifically to talk about the Sampo in Kalevala is because there's actually a planet called Kalevala in Honkai Star Rail. Now, keep in mind that it isn't officially confirmed if Sampo Koski and the planet Kalevala are related. But I think there are too many parallels for it to just be a coincidence. For example, if we go back to Ilmarinen, his name has the word Ilma in it, which is the Finnish word for air. And Sampokoski's combat element is wind. Hmm. Also, Sampokoski sends you a text message in-game where he unintentionally mentions that he has the ability to make ancient relics. Just like how Ilmarinen is able to make artifacts like the Sampo. Meaning that they both are skilled craftsmen. There might be even more of these parallels and I've just missed them. So if you happen to know any of them, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to hear about them. Now when it comes to his surname, Koski, it's a Finnish word that is commonly used as a surname and it translates to rapid, as in a rapid stream of water in a waterway. That's it. 
Okay, before we move on, I just want to say that if you've enjoyed this video so far, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Then you'll know when I post a new video and it helps the channel a lot. Videos like this take a lot of effort and time to make, so any support is appreciated. Also, check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash lunkytv. Link in the description. Thank you. For our next character, we have an NPC from a quest Swords to Plowshares that was added in the 2.4 update called Bavo Kalastaya. And he's actually from the planet Kalevala, the one we just talked about. On behalf of the Kalevalan delegation, I, Pavo Kalastaya, Pavo Kalastaya. I couldn't find any significance in his name regarding Finnish mythology, but if you Google translate his name to English, it translates to SpongeBob the Fisherman, which is incredibly incorrect, but also really funny. I assume this happens because the Finnish localization of SpongeBob SquarePants is called Pavo Pesusieni. Pavo being a regular name just like Bob and Pesusieni meaning sponge. So I guess Google thinks that SpongeBob is just a regular name in Finland, which is crazy. Kalastaja, on the other hand, does mean fisherman, so Google did get that part correct. Good job, Google. So, Paavo Kalastaja is an envoy from the planet Kalevala, who's in charge of diplomatic affairs. He's leading a delegation to return an ancient sword, Gu Yin, to the Xianzhou. Let me give you a quick rundown of Gu Yin. Gu Yin cursed sword. Cursed sword bad. Make people strong but mad. Gu Yin belonged to Cloud Knight. Cloud Knight stranded in Kalevala. Cloud Knight fight evil fairies and protect people of Kalevala. Gu Yin actually good? Cloud Knight give Gu Yin to Kalevala. Cloud Knight asks Kalevala to kill him and seal him in stone monument because he has Mara curse that turns him into monster. Sword becomes symbol of kingship. Kalevalans fight each other to get sword and become king. Gu Yin tired of Kalevalan people's bullshit and lodge himself to stone monument so nobody can become king. Kalevalans name the sword Miekka Kivessä. The first master of the Mieka Kivesa slew countless demons. Anyways, Mieka Kivesa is actually a Finnish translation of the sword in the stone, referencing the legend of King Arthur. However, the legend of King Arthur also does not relate to Finnish mythology at all. So why would the writers at Hoyoverse choose an Arthurian legend to represent the Mieka Kivessa if it's not related to Finnish mythology? I have two theories. For the first one, we have to go back to the Epic of Kalevala and look into a character I have not mentioned yet, Väinämöinen. Väinämöinen is one of the dudes from the Kalevala squad who was part of the Pohjola raid. As the squad was planning the raid, Väinämöinen asked our man's Ilmarinen to craft him a new sword. And this new sword was said to be gilded, silver-plated, and the very best. Väinämöinen boasted that he could cut through mountains with it. This could be a parallel to King Arthur's magical sword, Excalibur, that is also often depicted to be very highly dripped out and sharp enough to cut through iron, steel and wood. But I highly doubt that this is the case, because if the writers at Hoyoverse wanted more Kalevala references, why didn't they just name the sword after something in Kalevala in the first place? Like for example, they could call it Väinämöinen, the one who owned the sword, or even Ilmarinen, the one who crafted it. There's already parallels to Ilmarinen, so why stop here? Why call it Miekka Kivessä when it doesn't have any direct correlation to Kalevala? Maybe there's some logic here that I just don't understand, but I personally doubt that this theory is true. However, my second theory is a lot simpler and, in my opinion, more believable. Now, when it comes to different depictions of King Arthur, which one comes to your mind first? Chances are, you were thinking about Saber from the Fate series, you filthy weeaboo. And actually, I think you're onto something. If you don't know anything about Fate, 
Saber, also known as Artoria Pendragon, is an anime girl version of King Arthur, who was summoned to fight in the Holy Grail War, which is a can of worms that I am not opening right now. You only need to know why I think this relates to Saber. Reason 1. The quest that we've been talking about at the moment, Swords to Plowshares, is actually Yoon Lee's companion quest, who is a playable character that was added to Honkai Star Rail in the same update. And if you look at Yoon Lee's ultimate animation, it bears a striking resemblance to Saber's Noble Phantasm, Excalibur, which is pretty much Saber's ultimate attack. I think that this is a pretty obvious reference, like they weren't being subtle about it at all. Reason 2 In the Honkai Star Rail 2.4 livestream, they literally teased an upcoming collab between Honkai Star Rail and Fate Stay Night, which again is the same update. So in 2.4, we get a Fate collab teaser, an Excalibur ultimate animation, and a reference to King Arthur in the form of Miyaka Kivessa. Reason 3. In Honkai Star Rail 2.5, as in the very next update, a new playable character called Fei Xiao is seen to use a bow to absolutely annihilate a group of furries from miles away with a huge blast. This bears a striking resemblance to Archer from Fate Stay Night when he uses his special skill Kalad Bolg the second. And in the 2.5 livestream, they teased the Fate Stay Night collab again, but this time with an animated a trailer with a voice line from Archer himself. <laughs> so not only did they reference Archer's iconic skill set, they also brought him into the trailer. So this is why I think Miyaka Kivessa, despite its Finnish name, is not a reference to Finnish mythology and that it's just a fate reference. I mean, both of these updates have been just fate references. Also, what's with all the furry hate? Why do we keep killing them in this game? Can't we just get along, become friends, hold hands, breed? Anyway, does this then confirm that Saber is coming to Honkai Star Rail in the Fate Stay Night collab? Nope. All of the parallels and references I've talked about today are just speculation and theory. A game theory. So even if some of the cases I've presented might be convincing in my humble opinion, I still might be just talking out of my ass. And if you think that's the case, then feel free to hit me with the, well, actually, in the comments. Okay, that's enough fate. Let's talk about the planet Kalevala itself. Unfortunately, we don't have much information about it outside of what we see in the game during the Source to Plowshares quest. It's seemingly a planet with a cold climate, which is a common depiction of Finland because we are located in the northern part of Europe. I mean, we got Lapland, Santa Claus, Aurora Borealis, Depression, you know how it is. You also don't get to explore Kalevala at all. The small parts where you get to walk around are just reused assets from Bellabog. But I do wish it would become a planet that we could properly visit someday. Now last but not least, we gotta talk about our main man from the Astral Express, Welt Yang. Welt Yang is a man with a big wang. What the hell? Welt Yang is actually Finnish? Huh? At the end of the Penacony storyline, when the credits start rolling, if you know how to read, you might be able to pick up Welt's real name, Joachim Nokian Virtanen. Joachim isn't a name of Finnish origin, but it is still a name that is used in Finland, although kinda rarely. A more common spelling of this name in Finland is Joachim, while Joachim is more common in Germany. But it actually makes sense that he would be called Joachim instead. More on that in a minute. His surname, Nokian Virtanen, is as Finnish as it gets. Nokia is an actual town in the Pirkanmaa region of Finland. And Virta means stream, as in a stream of water. And in Nokia, there's an actual river called Nokian Virta. 
it's a real place you can visit. Now the reason why his surname is called Nokian Virtanen instead of just Nokian Virta is because Nen is added there just to make it sound more like a name. For example, Nuuska Muikkunen, Tarja Halonen, Johanna Tukiainen. If we look into Honkai Impact 3rd lore, we can actually find Joachim's parents. His father's name is Elias Nokian Virtanen, but apparently people just call him Finn because he's Finnish, I guess. Wow. His mother's name is Henrietta Yang, and she's a woman of German-Chinese descent. So, there is definitely Finnish and German influence when it comes to Joachim's full name. There isn't really that much other things about him relating to Finland, except for the fact that his father has talked about saunas with Welt Joyce, who is the original Welt that Joachim inherited his current name from. And you know, saunas are a Finnish stereotype, so yeah. I'm not gonna go deeper into this piece of lore, because there's already videos out there that are a lot more qualified to talk about this than me, being a new Honkai Star Rail player who has started the game three months ago and hasn't even touched a Honkai Impact 3rd. But I wanted to provide this small overview of the Finnish side of Joachim Nokian Virtanen because I haven't seen anyone talk about it before. Well, that's all the Finnish characters and references in Honkai Star Rail I could find so far. If you've enjoyed watching me yap about fictional Finns, drop a like on the video, comment your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel. You'll know when I upload next and it also supports and helps the channel grow. Uh. Any support is appreciated. Also again, if you enjoy live streams, check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash lunkytv. Link in the description. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. This is my first time ever making a lore video on anything. So I hope I did a good job. Anyways, have a great rest of your day. Peace.